I'm Emily Gibson, co-founder of ATX TV, and this is our Director of Operations, Laura Kincaid. The next conversation is particularly meaningful to us because Younger has been a part of the festival every year it's been on the air. And we, like all of you, are gonna miss it so much. So why not send it off in style? Get it? Uh, I get it, I like Thank it. You. Thank you. Uh, all I can really say is every outfit Liza has worn this season, I have desperately wanted. Uh, mainly just because I could never pull off what Lauren and Josh wear. So there you go. So I think I'm gonna have to bribe Jackie Demetrio. I think I said that right, Jackie. I'm so sorry <laughs> to take over my closet. Well, okay. Before we extreme home makeover your closet, let's bring out Joanna Robinson from Vanity Fair and she'll introduce us to our panelists. Hopefully not for the last time because you know we love a reunion um, and we'll get to hang out with the fantastic costume designer and cast members of Younger. Joanna. Oh. Hi, hello. Hi. Thank you for having me. Aww. My favorite place to be ATX at home. Uh, no, second favorite place. Favorite place to be is ATX proper. Then ATX at home, second place. So. 2022, mark your calendar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, way. I'm so excited. I jumped all over the opportunity to host this panel because I'm a huge Younger fan. Um, all of us at Vanity Fair are huge Younger fans. We love, we love this show. We love that the world that is created here. We're devastated that it's coming to an end. Um, by the time I think you see this panel, it will have ended. Um, and so we're here to just look back, take a look back. And love it. Enjoy the ride. So yeah. let me uh, introduce who will be along for this farewell to younger panel. Um, we've got Molly Bernard who plays the lovely Lauren. Hello, Molly. Hello. Hi. I'm so uh, we've, <laughs> we've got Nico Tortorella who plays Josh. Hello, Nico. Hey, y'all. And the woman who keeps everyone looking oh so incredibly stylish, costume designer, Jackie DiMaterio. Hello, Jackie. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right. So we are, we are so excited to talk about the season. I, I just watched all of the episodes this week. I, I, I inhaled them, they were so good. Um, but I want to like go back to the beginning or, or look back at the whole thing and for, start by asking you guys, Younger is a show that, um, I don't, I'm sure you've heard this before, but Younger is a show where I will tell someone about it. They will think, maybe that's not for me, but then they'll watch an episode or two and they're like, oh, this is incredible. I love this show. So what do you think it is about Younger that has hooked audience, even the most skeptical audience into this world? Um, let's start with Molly, I'll ask you. Oh, okay. Um, I, I think our show fundamentally has a really, really good heart. Um, I think it was cast really, really well. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, the alchemy is right. The chemistry that you see on camera is, the chemistry that like you get in your living room is just like taken directly from set. And that's, that like you can't act your way in or out of chemistry. It just, it is what it is. And I think fans see that we all love each other and wanna hang out with us for 22 minutes every week. And um, that's just my personal POV. <laughs> what do you think, Nico? I think at its core, the show is just perpetually optimistic and joyous, right? I think uh, this show's been on seven years now. These have been some interesting seven years, politically, uh -huh. socially. I think this show is uh, an escape in so many ways, right? Uh, and it's kind of this genre that doesn't really exist for, for whatever reason anymore. Uh, and just keeps people hooked, you know, every time. And ditto to everything else that Molly said about the cast. <laughs> With the hair towels and everything. Uh, Jackie, how about you? What do you think? Is it is it just because everyone is drooling over the gorgeous clothes? Yes, absolutely. It's only for the clothes. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I also agree with Molly and Nico. Um, the we've all been together for so long, and I think the cast is we're such a family on this show, and you can see it. I mean, on screen, but off screen, they're all so connected as well. And I think it's so important. And you can the viewers obviously are invested in each character and each character's story, but the relationships are they're real. And I think you know the. You know, I think the whole love triangle with Liza and 
you know, Josh and Charles was, was the initial big connection, but then it just, the relationships with the girls and the boys just grew so much over time that everyone I know that watches it, they, they, they just love each character and each character storyline. Yeah, that is a perfect segue into what I want to talk about in terms of, of Nico's character right away, Josh. Something that I really love about this season for your character is he's kind of unhooked from that will they, won't they love triangle story. And he's, he's got his own thing going on. Let's, let's start off, let's kick off this panel um, with an incredible clip um, that features a bit of, a surprising bit of costume design, I will say. Uh, so let's go ahead and watch um, uh, a, a romantic interlude gone wrong for, for poor Josh. Ooh. All right, so uh, Nico, let's talk about Josh as a dad. Like what, like, let's talk about dad Josh or daddy Josh. Like, what do you daddy think Josh about that? My favorite Josh, honestly, I think that uh, Josh was putting so much pressure onto his relationship with another person and, you know, his romantic relationship for so long that once Gemma came into the picture, he was able to shift focus and perspective and, and really start taking care of himself in a way that he maybe wasn't before uh, because he has to show up for himself in order to show up for his daughter. And I will say as an actor, working with an infant is such a joy, okay. honestly. It, it, it reminds you what it means to be an actor. Anything can happen at any given moment and you just have to roll with it, right? It's like, it's it, it was arguably one of my favorite parts of the last few seasons was working with a kid. And I, I am really good with kids and... <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I, there's an energy that comes with it that, that it just has to be a good time for it to work, you know? And dad, Josh is older, right? Younger's getting older quite literally. And he just, he, he feels more mature. And this, this moment, are we talking about this moment? Do we want to talk about this moment that we just watched? Because yeah, let's talk about it. The real moment. First of all, I want to throw this to Jackie for a second and talk about the size of the diaper because this was this was a real situation, right? It was a situation. I thought for sure that a I would have to build it because I was like, what diaper besides like an adult diaper depends? But that wasn't going to read because you needed the the baby fasteners at the beginning, you know, with a little bit of the baby decor on the fasteners. Um, but I will say that there are some freaky people out there and they do sell them online. <laughs> so like adult baby diapers. Yes. Like adult baby diapers. So oh. that is a thing. And okay. so I ordered them, but then I had um, our master tailor Corinne do a little bit of de-stuffing because it was so bulky on our actress. And <laughs> it was just like, she looked swallowed up in it. So we took some of the inner, the, the, you know, the stuffing for what, you know, is on the inside out to thin it out a bit, to make it a little bit attractive for on camera. Um, I did watch this episode and it was, you know, I mean, it, I think it works. It, it sold the so joke. <laughs> off for sure. The, the suspension of disbelief though has to be real because we have to, realize that Josh does have an adult sized diaper in his okay, That was the other he thing. He has baby diapers, he has adult sized diapers. So there's something else going on here yeah. entirely. Anna really, I mean, we had a few ridiculous moments this season from the, the turtle sex noises to the baby diaper. She just was like rolling with the punches and a joy to work with. Yes. And then that cutaway to Gemma watching the situation, like <laughs> stuck between two worlds. Like, what what does Josh do in these moments? Give and that the, an Emmy. And, <laughs> and then that she she asks to keep it ultimately is really the I, I have questions. I have questions yeah. about it, but I'm not shaming anyone. Uh, <laughs> ja Jackie, did you think your first costume question was gonna be about the diaper? Probably not. Yeah. But welcome to ATX. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So, well, okay. Speaking of not, we're not shaming anyone who might want to purchase an adult baby diaper. Um, I want to actually go to my clip for, uh, for Molly here, for Lauren. Uh, Lauren and Maggie uh, are on a little bit of a fake date here. Um, and it leads me into something that I want to talk about when it comes to Lauren and this show. So let's watch this clip um, featuring Molly. Okay, so something I think is underrated about this show is how beautifully sex positive it is in general. Just how there's just like acceptance of all, you know, he, she, they, everything and anything you want to do, whatever. Like no one's here to yuck your yum. So I was just like, I was wondering, Molly, if you could talk about, I think Lauren is a really good example of that. And I was wondering if you could talk about that aspect of the character. I love talking about this. This is my favorite part about Lauren. It's something I'm so proud of the writers and the show and all of us for, you know, this is a really important side of queer representation. I think Lauren is an aspirational queer person, right? I, I'm I'm all for the very difficult queer stories. I think those are equally important, but I think it's also critical that you show, um, Lauren is the only character on the show that has parents, right? She's a millennial whose parents do not care about her sexuality. And they know they love her unconditionally. She loves herself unconditionally. She's happy. She's thriving. Her friends love her. They all accept her. And her sexuality is the least interesting thing about her as a character. It's not tokenized. So I really appreciate that about Lauren um, for so many reasons. But I, I'm glad that you that it's funny. The things that I appreciate, I know I don't always. I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, do other people see this? So I'm really glad that 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 you enjoy that part of Lauren as well, because um, she's not it's not just that she's quirky, but she's she's confident and she loves herself. And that's actually those are all, all three very different things. And um, it, it somehow centers on her. Her self-acceptance is how she's thriving. I love that. Yeah, and it, part of part of the way in which uh, Lauren expresses herself and everyone expresses themselves on this show is through fashion, obviously. Jackie is here. Let's make some friends and enemies by talking about costumes. Uh, I wanted to ask you all, um, maybe Jackie, if you could be thinking about your favorite costume that you designed for these two, if you have one in mind. And then I want to ask these two what their favorite costume is that they wore that you, and maybe their least favorite. I don't know if they feel like talking about that. Uh, so maybe let's start with Molly because it feels like, I see a light in your eyes, like maybe you have a, an answer ready. Uh, okay, I so just largely speaking, Jackie taught me how to dress. I, I, I don't know what I was doing before I met Jackie. Like now I understand the beauty of a knit and so I, I like my favorite Lauren outfits are probably oddly maybe the most boring of Lauren's clothes because I really like a tight, simple knit. Um, and Jackie like taught me the beauty of that. Um, gosh, my favorite costume. I love that little Miu Miu number I wore this year with the little white kind of faux tuxedo uh, sleeveless blouse and the black skirt. I just, I think that's quintessentially Lauren. It's like a tiny little skirt, tiny little waist, a little bit crop top, a lot of long stickly arms and legs and that like call it a day and like a, a funny heel. I love that. What about you, Nico? Um, you know, Josh's fashion on this show is obviously hyper-masculine and like quintessential like Brooklyn dude, right? And I am, I'm, I'm quite a shopper myself, and I, I lean towards more of the vintage finds and like treasure pieces. And I think that Jackie does such a good job of bringing the luxury items into the mix and and counterbalancing it with some of the vintage pieces. I think. Uh, for like the staple, like the the staple Saint Laurent motorcycle jacket yeah, uh, with okay. 
It has to be the jacket, right? Yeah. Oh, it's the jacket, right? It's the jacket, but like with a vintage tee, a pair of ripped up jeans, and a pair of Saint Laurent boots too. You know, but it's like that is something that you can wear forever. And really, I think Jackie taught me about the, the longevity of, of fashion, having those pieces that you can go to and mixing them up with other pieces that you have in your closet. Um, yeah. yeah. I love that. What do you think, Jackie? Do, the, do their answers line up with yours? Yeah. I mean, I have to say Molly is, she for me has been the season, has, I, I loved her character the season with the whole starting off in the office. Uh, the Diana suits. The Diana suit, just because she yeah. can so pull them off. And it was so fun to do that on this little petite thing that can wear fashion. Like she's she wears clothes so well. So that was so fun for me to like have those power suits, but what really Lauren would be a power suit. And it was just such a like a departure for her but I had so much fun doing it on her. Like we had these, these monster fittings at the beginning of the season. And it was like, I could have kept going. Like I was just like one after another, like with the office looks, it was just, she was just, she looked so cute. Like in the shorts, like the suits that were like the short suits and the boucle jackets. And it was just so much fun with the net, like the larger like pieces of necklace that was supposed to be like Diana inspired. Like she just, she worked those looks so well that and it was just so much fun for me. And then I think again, like we were saying, uh, that that big Mew Mew white coat um, at the end. Oh my God! When I watched that episode, she was like utilizing that jacket, that coat, and it was like she's sitting in a hospital cafeteria with this like beautiful Mew Mew fur collared coat, and she was just like working it so much into the scene that I was like loving her for that. <laughs> and I became one. Yes. <laughs> Don Ruse, the writer was there that, that day and he was like, you need to take this coat home. And I was like, <laughs> I could never, like what the code and I have just done this evening <laughs> stay in this faux hospital cafeteria because we made sweet, sweet love. <laughs> It was like with the boys sitting with their scrubs on and then you're like with the, I mean, it was just, it was fabulous. So that was, but Molly, Molly this year, Lauren has just been a dream for me to dress. And, and Nico is always a dream boat for me to dress because Nico has such a, his sense of, he's such a wonderful sensibility with clothing and wardrobe and what's natural for him. And he comes in and he inspires me with these pieces that he finds on eBay or vintage or in some little town in Texas that he was at wherever he goes like he brings in these pieces and I'm like god like he has such a great eye and he knows just with the details he's so good with details so for me like I think I do like his like he was saying the classic Josh um this season I loved when him and uh Debbie were together and Debbie had the three piece, uh, she had a Gucci green three piece tux, uh, suit on with a tie. And he was wearing the Saint Laurent motorcycle jacket and he had a white button down on and he had these beautiful Richard James um, Murray fabric trousers. I thought he looked, he looked classic Josh, but dressed up. And so it was, I thought it was so strong. I loved that look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The dressed up motorcycle jacket. You yeah. to see it. Um, I want to ask uh, the actors here if if you could have another character's wardrobe, which other character's wardrobe would you steal for yourself? I would probably take Kelsey's because that closet is a chic, chic, Chloe ridden, Gucci absolutely painted up and down. I mean, Kelsey's wardrobe is crazy. It's, it's chic. It's very chic. Are you fond of a cape? Are you a cape person? I would be if I could have the closet and if the agreement was I need to wear the capes, I would become really good friends with the capes. Yeah. Be a cape person. All right. How about you, Nico? I'm, I'm going to say specifically Debbie Mazur's closet, not necessarily Maggie's, 
as long as the hair and makeup come with the package, of course. No, the way that Debbie is able to put herself together, I've honestly, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, she comes to set and her hair's already done. Her makeup's halfway done. She does 90% of everything herself. She brings clothes, right? She like, like it's, it's, it's a mix of like, she has such an influence in the fashion too. She is iconic, quite literally. I think that word is over these days but like right. it is fitting and appropriate for Debbie Mills. I love that. How about you Jackie? Is there any is there any one character that you could dress yourself in their clothing? I don't know if I would say one character. Um I definitely pieces of Kelsey's pieces of Lauren's pieces of Debbie's pieces of Josh's. I mean I I've been asked that question a lot and there's always just favorite pieces from everyone's closet that I think I could actually wear and, you know, piece together. I want to ask you, Jackie, because the show start the show starts with this premise, right? That this character is has to pretend to be younger than they are to re-enter the workforce um, at this time in their life. And uh, that presents a unique des costume design challenge for you. How do you dress? Sutton so that you know we immediately look at her and say this is someone who's trying to look younger um as that premise becomes less and less central to the show and it sort of expands in something else like what other challenges were you finding as as the show went on what you know what got you what got you so excited to to go to work every day on younger well I think they all evolved so much over the seven seasons and you know like you said, when Liza Miller starts out and she's lying about her age, that was such a, that was a really forced look. That was her taking several different trends and wearing them all. You know, it was what she thought a 20 something would wear. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like one, one on trend piece. It was many <laughs> and it was very layered. She was very yeah. layered. Mm -hmm. um, and the season she was so layered. Yes. And then they, as time went on and her story unfolded, she kind of kept stripping away those pieces and those layers and got to a point with her where it was just more about her true self. And I didn't want it to be like the jacket with the scarf and the flannel and, you know, it was really just a dress, you know? And it like showcase, showcased Sutton's beautiful, she has a statuesque Broadway dancer figure and she can, wear clothes and it was just more simplified. Like for sure, everything was simplified with her as, as yeah. the story went on. Um, and I mean, everybody else's characters also just their storylines evolved so much that it was each one of them. I feel like sometimes when I look back and see old episodes or, you know, pictures, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, they look so different because every, they've all grown up so much. So I think just telling the story through clothing is, has been so much fun and I, love where we landed in the end through wardrobe. I have to say, Jackie, you are an incredible storyteller the, via wardrobe. And you're more, you're so much more than just a costume designer. And I mean, part of that is the nature of our show being that it's like New York and the clothes are their own like characters also. But I remember when we did my very last fitting you were very concerned, not concerned, but really focused on getting the final scene right, because most of us are in that final scene. And you were like, it was so sweet. You were you were really just like in the zone. You, you know, I, I, I'll never forget. You were like, okay, I just need to make sure that what is the most Lauren thing we can put you in, but that also shows her evolution and that is quintessentially like it's this one moment that that encapsulates the show and you kind of like were willing i love that you were willing to put yourself up to what's kind of an impossible task and you did it it's so <laughs> it's so amazing now i remember that moment too with you because i i started to really think about that last time we see everybody and i was like wow this has to really read who these characters are now, but also 
like you said, have that, those touches of who they were, you know, it was, I don't know, that was really important to me. And I, you know, collaborated with Molly about it. Cause I remember sitting in the back of our wardrobe truck and I just stopped everything and was like, I want to talk to you about this last scene because <laughs> it was important. And she of course was right there with me and like all of them, like all the actors, they're so collaborative with me on the show. Like I love them so much, like a family. And we've all been through so much personally and professionally. I, I don't think I'll ever have a cast like this again. I really don't. One of course, the big challenges that you guys all had to deal with in this final season is, is the COVID interruption and then going back working with the COVID restrictions. I talked to Darren a little bit, like as you guys were starting back up and you know, he was just so eager to be able to make this the best it can be and as safe as it can be. And so I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about sort of what some of those challenges were filming this season with those restrictions. Um, starting with, I mean, Nico, let's say. Yeah, I mean, production flipped upside down. It was unrecognizable comparatively. Uh, you would show up to set and I mean, even before you would show up to set, you would have to get tested and you would show up and everyone would be in masks and you'd have to get tested when you show up and there were social distancing and, you know, you, we had these little tent bubbles. We couldn't really interact with each other from an actor standpoint on television already rehearsal is this much and right. now with masks and goggles we can't see what the other person is doing in rehearsal so you're discovering everything on the day when the cameras are rolling which is insane um but i will say thank god that we had each other thank god that we had seven six seasons before this and we were so close and had already been through, like Jackie said, so much together as a unit uh, that, I mean, I couldn't imagine going and doing a new show in September of last year with new actors. In a, Literally, in a new and I kept talking about this. I remember we talked about this almost every scene we shot, like how, because there were so many obstructions, their face shields, masks. I, uh, I, I mean, the distance, it, there was no way to touch base. There was no way to actually like be like, where are you? You know, it was so hard. The heart out of everything else that's happening um, on the in the scene. That being said, outside of the scene work, the love had to be there exponentially. Uh, and I think really what what this season was for so many of us that call New York City home on this show was a love letter to the resilience of this city. It was like, no matter fucking what, we are showing up, we are going to get this job done, and it's going to be the best season yet. And in the greatest city in the world, because this is who we are and this is what we're doing. Yeah. For that, I'm forever grateful. Jackie, did it impact your design at all? Did, did the, how did it impact your work? It did, it was, you know, we block, we, we did block shooting this season um, and four episodes at a time. At one point it was eight. At eight. one point it was, yes. we were still so block good. shooting. Yes. Yeah. At one point there was eight. And I remember when it we were- a short point. It was like, there was like, I think four, three or four weeks where we were actively shooting eight episodes. Yes. And for a costume designer, <laughs> that gets <laughs> very confusing. So, because I did set up large fittings with everybody at the beginning because I knew we were going to be block shooting. So I said, let's do these monster fittings. I don't know how many times I can get you guys back with COVID. I don't really, you know, I, let's try to bank as many looks as we can. And, you know, so I did that at the beginning, but then what had happened was, is once we started shooting eight at a time, you know, I would set all the looks as best as I could for the blocks but things were constantly shifting and changing. I look at everybody as a whole, obviously when they're in the scene to say, is that person in pink or is this person, in, like they have to look aesthetically beautiful or you know, there's not someone wearing plaid and plaid and plaid. Now I'm gonna tell you, 
there have were many mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I watched these episodes and I know my husband was like, nobody is seeing that but you. I'm like, oh no, they'll see it. There was a scene where Molly, Hillary, and Sutton are all wearing bows. Like, rib- <laughs> like Sutton's in a ribbon grow grain bow. Kelsey's in a grow grain ribbon bow and Molly's in a bow on the side. So- and I was like, how, who let this happen? I was like, what? I was- <laughs> I went back. I was like trying to do the, like, how did this happen? And I realized because Molly and Hillary were established separately on a different day and they weren't supposed to, the schedules were shifting so much that Sutton was established just another day. Like it all got so confusing that I didn't catch it. So it definitely impacts. And I know, you know, it sounds, you know, but for me, I was like, three bows in one. But the thing with what Nico just said too about Hillary being pregnant, for me, that also was affecting if certain scenes were being canceled or rescheduled and it was further along in her pregnancy, but we shot her in that costume that was already established when she was smaller, things weren't fitting, things that we had to hide the bump more. I mean, it was like, you know, the expansion of the bump and going back to something that she was wore two months before because we couldn't finish it because someone had a case and we had to quarantine, you know, there was constantly those, those hurdles as well. So despite all of that, you guys turn in this excellent final season of Younger and your characters all, you know, get their stories wrapped up. And I'm wondering if you think, when you think about, um, these characters that you spent so much time with, when you think about Lauren and Josh, like, what do you want for them for their future? Like, let's start with Molly. Like, what do you, what do you want for Lauren going forward in her life? Oh my goodness. Um, I, I really want her as, as I, my, one of my favorite things about Lauren is her loyal, steadfast, you know, dedication to her friendships and to her, her girlfriends and also to her Josh friends. Um, but I, I want her to really focus uh, that as much as she focuses on her friends, on herself and her own career. I think it would be, it would be nice for her to like really, I mean, it was cute that she was the in-house publicist at Empirical and I loved that, but I'm a little sad that Heller PR didn't like take off Heller good PR. So I want for her to have an endeavor that really like that she can be very proud of. I want her to be proud like Diana was. How about you, Nico? I mean, everybody at the end of the season, all of the characters came out with a win. For sure. I know that anyone watching this right now has, has finished the season. Josh got the big W, let's be honest, right? Like the way the season ends, there is space for newness in a relationship potentially that so many people were hoping for. I first and foremost want Josh to continue co-parenting Gemma in, in such an incredibly beautiful way. I think that like, he is such a good dad. He will continue to be such a good dad. Potentially there is room for more children in his future. Um, I don't really know what that looks like, but it, it could happen. Um, you know, and he, he, he bought the building, like business is good, thriving. Like Josh's is stepping into his prime and like his, his core group of friends slash remember when Josh had other friends that weren't yeah. just like, <laughs> but his, Josh like his, better. Yeah, Josh had a roommate, Josh had was in a band, Josh did all these other things before <laughs> season Josh board. <laughs> yeah, Josh board. But Josh Josh's like best friends that we know of on this show between Maggie, Lauren, and the da, 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 Liza, like are there. And I don't think that they're going away anytime soon. We are losing Kelsey to Los Angeles, but like, I think they'll all stay close. Oh, yeah. And that 
you know, as as a queer person, chosen family is is so important. You know, we 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 never got Josh's last name ever. I thought for sure that we were going to get Josh's last name in the finale of this season, like a Mr. Big moment. But Darren just like we didn't get it. But Josh, you know, Josh doesn't have any family. Like like Molly was saying, the the only parents are Lauren's parents. This really is a family unit, and it is so. Uh, it is, it, it absolutely mirrors the family unit that we have created. And I just hope that like, that continues on both ends of the camera. Well, it's, it's the end. It's not gonna be the last panel at ATX, but it's the end of the thing. If you could pick like one memory that you just like go back to that you wanna share with the folks watching, what's, what's, your, what's your big memory from Younger that you wanna share here at the end? Um, yep, yep, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Jackie, what do you have for me? Oh my God. Is it ripping the stuffing out of a giant diaper? <laughs> <laughs> That's up there. No, um, I don't know. There's so many. Um, I mean, like from the beginning, I just feel like, I don't know. We just had such memorable fittings over, I mean, over seven years. Um, and I think you know, I think Princess Pam Pam was a great one with Liza. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, you know, the uh, this season, like I said, Molly and her Barbarella space look, little her her um, party was fun. Um, but it's not. I can't. I really. It's for me. It's really just about the friendships that I made with everybody. I mean, it's like that's what I think of. Is my like I'll be friends with them forever you know, and that's, that's really what I take from it. And just being able to work with such wonderful people. And it's very rare, you know, in this business that everybody gets along and there's so many different personalities and, you know, it's hard, but this is a core, this is a, this is a good group. How about you, Nico? And you can't take Jackie's answer. <laughs> well, I'm already emotional, even just thinking about Jackie's answer. Um, <laughs> I mean, in terms of the work itself, I think that the most rewarding scene work were, was the emotional stuff with Sutton. Uh, like we were both so attached to our characters and specifically the relationship between Josh and Liza that whenever we were mad at each other, there was, you know, any sort of struggle, like, we couldn't even look at each other before we started working. Like it was that intense. This this last scene that we shot, it was it was my last day. I I think I was the first or second actor to leave. But I was the first one. Like I I couldn't I could I could barely breathe. Like let alone get any words out. Like I was a mess. Um, and going to work knowing that we had true teammates, family, like no matter what type of shit. Um, I was talking to Jackie about this earlier today. Like, I don't think we realize how spoiled we were or how good we had it. And like, if you get on a Zoom with all of us, even now and we start talking about the love that we have for each other, like we'll all start getting emotional. Uh, I don't know who cries more, but honestly, um, it's just, and jalapeno dick, honestly. <laughs> throw it in there jalapeno dick was the most fun scene i think i've ever shot in my life <laughs> you were cracking up in that scene I was, I, it, was, it was a marathon it was a marathon <laughs> right, molly molly bring us home you have to top jalapeno dick so good luck oh. with that. <laughs> yeah jalapeno dick i mean nico's right it's like i am uh, we always talk about this and then we always get on these zoom really <laughs> emotional okay um I don't know. I don't know. It's like we just, you know, filmed the finale, right? So uh, this season was is so fresh in my memory and in my heart. And it was such a singular season because of what the world was going through. So I couldn't see my parents who live 10 minutes away from me, but I saw this family every day. And this 
season is a bit jarbled and jumbled for me. And I was going to say, you know, my first scene when I do Topless Tuesday, because that's like a fun answer. And that always, it is, it like set the tone for who Lauren is. And it helped me understand how, what the rules of this show are and any who's will bees. But really, I think that the like heart answer is that uh, I was there for, I was there for everyone's last day. I just happened to be scheduled that way and watching Nico leave and seeing Nico the moments before he shot his last scene and the moments after, you know, I will never forget the tenderness and the, we all were heartbroken. I, I was there for Hillary's last scene. I was there for Debbie's Sutton was there for mine came out of the dark and surprised me and so, you know, I wrote Sutton Fan Mail when I was 14. It's just, it's crazy that we, uh, we really were in love with each other. And it, it was like, it's a very, I don't think I knew it. It was on my last day suddenly when Sutton was like holding me that I was like, oh, dang, yeah. this is the, this is the end. And uh, I think it's a high, even though it's it's obviously very bittersweet, but it's a high because we built those relationships through this show over the past seven years. It's defined my entire 20s, this show. So it's uh, it's been the gift of my life to be on this show and make these friends and these collaborators. This, these relationships are forever. Thank you all so much. I cannot believe we went from diapers to jalapeno dick to tears, but I think that just sums up hunger. So, <laughs> so thank you all. Uh, thank you all for joining us in for seven seasons of this. Can career. I ask one question real quick? Mm -hmm. um, Jackie, in yeah. in a short answer, how would you exp how would you describe the the evolution of fashion over seven years. Cause you go back and you look at the first season, it looks like 30 years ago. Like it seems so, so long ago, I just know. fashion. Like, how do you think fashion has changed in the last seven years? It's changed because like you said, when you, when I catch some of those episodes, um, <laughs> I'm cringing a little bit. <laughs> like, I mean, I think, I don't know. I think that seven years ago, what we were, we were, what we started, we did the pilot in 2014, I think. Right. So I think that at that time, I don't know, it just seemed like more stuff, <laughs> right? Like um, it's it's these days, it's a bit chicer. It's a bit chicer. It's cleaner. The lines are simpler. Colors are more muted. There was just a lot of things going on, like too much designs, too contrived, too- So many embellishments. Yes, too many embellishments. It was a lot. It was, you know, sparkles and it was ruffles and it was just, I think different fabrications. And I think over time, I think we also simplified the show as it went on, but I think also in fashion that happened as well because it is definitely different. Back. I want to see that op-ed in Vanity Fair. Fashion over the last seven years. By As defined by younger. <laughs> um, yeah, I love that. No, I think I think that's you know we're, we have to wrap up here, but I think I think that that's the show. The show starts with this like big premise, and then it just sort of boils down to this really core found family story. So the story of younger is the story of fashion and found family. Love it. Love this for all of us. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much.